morning everyone, welcome to Gen 12 Church, thanks for tuning in with us this morning. Right now we're going to get into a time of prayer, so let's acknowledge the Holy Spirit in this place. So if you're watching, I ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads. Let us pray. Thank you Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for the service Lord, thank you for um, each person who is watching right now Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just fill this room, Lord. Fill each person in here, Lord. And fill those who are going to watch, Lord God. I pray that you just move, Lord, mightily in this place, Lord. I pray for um, for wisdom, Lord, of who is speaking, Lord God. I pray that the words that are spoken in the service, Lord, are um, solely from you, Lord God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you're going to do, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that um, whatever happens, Lord, is according to your to your will, Lord. Yes. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, just fill each person. Let your presence be felt um, strongly as soon as they join the service, Lord God. I pray, Lord, they'll be drawn to you, Lord. I pray for change, Lord, and those who, um, who are coming to receive, Lord, who are watching. I pray, Lord God, that they won't, um, after this, they won't be the same, Lord God. Yes, Lord. I pray their hearts would be changed, Lord, minds be renewed. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move in this place, Lord God. Pray for breakthrough in this service, yes, Lord. Lord. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in our lives, our friend and helper. We just acknowledge you in this place, in our lives. We are grateful for you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, our Savior and our closest friend. 
We thank you that 2,000 years ago you laid your life down as a sacrifice so that we could have a new life, so that we could be made clean, so that we could be forgiven. And today as a church, Lord, we come before you and we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, because we sin against you knowingly and unknowingly. We sin against you in our mind, Lord, the thoughts that we think. We ask that you would forgive us for thinking those things, Lord God. We ask that you would purify our minds with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Help us to think your thoughts, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for our eyes, Lord, the things that we see, the things that we've watched, or the way that we've looked at people around us, Father. If we've sinned against you in that way, we ask that you would wash our eyes right now. Help us to look at those around us as you've called us to look at them. Help us to see people the way you see them. Forgive us, Father, for our ears or the things that we listen to, the lies that we accept as truth when we don't listen to your voice or be obedient to when you are talking to us, Father. We ask, Lord, for your forgiveness and that you would purify our ears right now, washing away every wicked thing, Lord, that we have um, consumed in the things that we listen to. Forgive us, Lord, and purify our ears. Help us to hear your voice so clearly, Father. Forgive us, Lord, for our mouths, Lord, the words that we speak, Lord, the curses that come out of our mouths, the songs that we sing, Lord, um, that don't uplift or encourage others, Lord, or even honor you, Father. We ask, Lord, that um, you would take control of our lips, Lord. We, we submit them to you right now, asking, Lord, that as you purify them, that we would surrender them for your glory, Lord God. That, that our lips, Lord, that our words that we speak would be so intentional, Lord, um, in the way that we um, encourage those around us, the way that we speak over our, our circumstances, Father. Forgive us, Lord, for our noses, Lord, which represent the business that we get into. Get into. If we've gotten ourselves involved in other people's business and, and gossip, Lord, and in and, and speaking lies about other people, we ask, Lord, that you would purify our noses, Lord. Help us to stay focused on what you've called us to stay focused in, Lord. Help us to focus on your work, Lord, your kingdom, Lord, building up people in the way that we um, have relationships and converse with others, Lord God. We thank you, Father, and we ask for forgiveness for our hands, the work that we do, Lord, the deeds that we've done. If we've sinned against you, Lord, knowingly and unknowingly, we ask that you would wash our hands clean right now. Wash our hands right now, Lord Jesus, with your precious blood. Forgive us, Lord. We surrender our hands to you today. Help us, Lord, to do your work, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be mindful of the things that we do with our hands. Please forgive us, Father, for our feet, Lord, the way that we lead our lives, Lord, the way that we walk or the places that we go to when we've walked outside of your will. We ask for your forgiveness that you would wash our feet and that you, Holy Spirit, would be the one to direct our steps. Help us, Lord, in the day-to-day -day lives, Lord, that we live, not just the big decisions, Lord. We honor you in the small decisions, Lord. The things that we don't see as important, you see as important. Help us to walk in your will for our lives, Father. And lastly, Lord, but most importantly, Lord, our, the heart, Lord, our hearts, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord. Your word says that the heart is deceitful. And so we ask, Lord, that we would not submit to our feelings or our emotions, but that, um, that we would surrender our hearts to you today, that you would purify and, and wash away all the wickedness, Lord, all the lust, Lord, all the lies, the deceit, Lord, the anger, um, any brokenness and hurt that's in there as well, Lord. You've not called us to live a life of hurt or brokenness, but you've um, your blood is what sets us free. And so I pray that right now over the church and we pray that over ourselves right now, that you would purify our hearts, set our bodies apart for your glory, Lord God. As you wash away every wicked thing, we thank you for this freedom that we have, Lord, that we don't have to be bound by sin, but that we are free because of your sacrifice, Lord Jesus. And even as we sing these songs, Lord, there is such freedom in declaring them, Lord, because you are the one that set us free. I thank you for your church that is joining us in the service. I pray that if there's anyone that feels burdened right now, touch them right now, Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, for freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom in Jesus' name, that you would um, just take the weight, Lord. Take that weight, the burdens, Lord, that they're carrying right now. Wash it away with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. There's so much to celebrate, so much to be thankful for. And we just say thank you for what you did on the cross and for dying and, and resurrecting, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says...
Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gentile Church and to those who have just stopped on. Welcome to you. Right now, we're going to get into a time of worship. So if you're watching, I encourage your church to just surrender it all today. Give Jesus, give the Lord all you can. Amen. He is worthy of all the honor, all the glory. So let him receive just that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we have, this privilege we have of worship, Lord God. Yes. That we can worship you freely, Lord, in this country, yes. Lord. We don't acknowledge that as a blessing, Lord. We take advantage of that. So um, I thank you, Lord God. We, we honor you in this place. We will worship you. In the one who gave it 
sovereignty over our lives, Lord. We thank you for your sovereignty in this church, Lord, that even though that we are going through storms, even though we're going through tribulation right now, that you still reign, you are still God over all things and all circumstances. We declare that over our lives right now as a church, and we say thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, because of your love, Lord, that we be, we have this relationship with you, that we are covered by you, covered by your grace and by your blood. And because of that, we can walk knowing, Lord, that we are never alone as well, Father. We thank you so much, Lord, for your great love that you have for us. And we just say we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. And as we sing this song, church, let's just continue to, um, right throughout, just continue to love on the Lord this morning. Let's thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Lord Jesus.
is yet to come. For what is yet to come? Shattered eyes, but you can. Shadowed eyes, but you can see clearly through valleys and dark storms. I can see. I can see you're getting me ready. So I'll see. as Crystal continues to play, I just want to encourage you, church, to pray out right now. Let's give the Lord um, praise. Let's give Him honor this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for who you are, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for what it is that you're doing within the church, Lord, that you are getting your people ready for what it is we're meant to face, Lord. And just like the song that we're singing, Lord, that we're being covered by your armor, Lord. We're being covered by your robe. We're covered by your grace, Lord God. And we know, Lord, that as we're obedient to you, as we continue to walk in your calling, Lord God, um, that you have big plans, Lord. And you are. it's time for the church to rise up, Lord God. And we just pray that right now over the church, Lord. Those that are watching, Lord, that you would build the, their faith up, Lord God. That as we continue to get to know you through your word, Lord that the faith of the believers will begin to rise up right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord. What an honor it is to serve you, Lord God. Even in this way, Lord, we just um, just say thank you, Lord, uh, for your sovereignty over this church, Lord, that you are the one that's leading us every step of the way. And we just bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus this morning. Bless you, Lord Jesus. We love you so much. Don't give up, church, in your praise and worship. Let's honor the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, Father. Jesus, our mighty Savior. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Come, let your will be done in this place, Father. Let your will be done in us today, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We honor your presence, Lord. Come and have your way in this church, Lord. Come have your way in this service. We just say thank you, Lord. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. And thank you for joining us in worship. Up next, we have the vision segment. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin DeSilva, and today I'll be doing the vision segment. I want to first off uh, start off by saying um, what Gen 12 stands for. So Gen 12 stands for um, Genesis 12 verse uh, 1 to 3 and I'll read from it uh, and it says Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in 
and, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Our church motto is uh, blessed to be a blessing and we get that from these verses here. Um, just a bit about the church history. Um, before Gen 12 Church was birthed, uh, Reinhard Bonnke, a great uh, German evangelist, was called to preach uh, the gospel in Africa, but he was called by God to immediately cancel his crusade to come fly to Melbourne, Australia to pray for 50 to 100 people in 2011. Our senior pastor, Pastor Offa and, Ma uh, and Anne Mahunga were a part of the, those who were invited to pray over, uh, to be prayed over. Uh, Ronald Bonke gave them a book and the book was called Living a Life of Fire. Lena read it and God moved her heart to uh, start a Bible study in, at the end of 2012 along with Crystal, Shari and Eliana, which later became Gen 12 Church in, uh, in November 2013. Uh, it was God's plan for Gen 12 Church to be here and not ours. So we must do what God has called us to do. Thank you everyone and I'll pass it on to the next segment. Good morning church, my name is Gloria Nguyen and I'll be sharing the tithes and offering message with you today. Um, so today I'll be reading um, from the scripture Malachi 3 verses 8 to 10, which says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Um, from this passage, I just wanted to point out a part of the scripture which says, You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Um, so if we're talking about tithes and offerings, tithes is 10% of um, any income that you have or anything that you are earning. Um, and offerings is anything you want to give on top of that. So rightfully, the 10% um, your tithing, that belongs to the Lord. Um, so as it says, you're cursed with a curse for you have robbed me. If we as a church um, or individually are not um, giving God his 10%, then we are robbing him of um, what rightfully belongs to him. Um, and not only does God want us to practice um, to give back to him, he also says, try me now in this, um, and that he will, as you continue to tithe, as you, as you do tithe and, um, and offer as well, um, he will pour out such blessings that there won't be enough room to receive it. Amen. Um, yeah, so even though it can be tough during these times as well, and um, especially if um, you're not you're struggling financially, um, just an encouragement to everyone, including myself, to just give what you can, and even if you're only receiving a little bit, um, prioritize the tithes and offerings, and put it aside, and then give that to God first, and then um, yeah, and you will be blessed. There's also other ways we can um, bless God with tithing, which is through our gifts and talents as well. And just in everything that we do day to day, um, always giving him the best that we that we have and give it to him as an offering. Amen. Yeah, so I just want to thank you. And I'll just quickly pray for the tithes and offerings now. If you can close your eyes and bow your heads with me. Um, dear Holy Father, I just want to thank you for this day that you've given us, God. I just want to thank you for your just your constant love and your constant um, guidance over us, Lord. And even though we are so unworthy, Lord, that you continue to love on us unconditionally. And um, as we as we tithe today and as we give our offerings, Lord, I pray that you'll bless this and that this will be able to use. This will be able to be used for a greater purpose, Lord, and 
um, to sow back into your kingdom, Lord. And I just thank you for those that um, had the courage to give and also for those that are still um, trying their best, Lord. And I just pray for your continuance, um, your continuing protection over each one of us. And yeah, just to just show us the way in our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm just going to pass it on to the next segment. Good morning, church. My name is Matt Eli, and I'm one of the leaders here at Gen 12. Um, as we come into this time of communion, I just ask you to settle down and um, don't move around much. Uh, this is a holy time um, for us to um, have together and uh, show respect to the Lord. And before I begin, I'd like to give you some time to get yourself right with the Lord, if you haven't already. Um, for it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Awesome. When Jesus sat down with his disciples, they were celebrating the Passover, which was in the time of Moses, when in Egypt, the Spirit of God would strike the firstborn of every child in each household unless they sacrificed the perfect lamb and put its blood on their doorposts. This was just before God took the children of Israel out of Egypt. They celebrated the Passover so they would remember how good and faithful God had been in taking them out of slavery and bondage. A perfect lamb was used in Egypt. And Jesus was that perfect sacrificial lamb for us. Jesus had been so good and faithful to us, just as God was to the Israelites in Egypt. This is why we have communion, to remember the sacrifice he was for us. Like Jesus and his disciples, we have come together, even though it's online, we have come together to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ with the bread that represents his broken body for us and the wine that represents his blood that was shed for us. Jesus told his disciples to do this in remembrance of me. When we remember the death and sacrifice that Jesus suffered, we are reminded of the greatness and the depth of his never ending love. It says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So church, if you have your bread with you, let's take it and eat it together as a sign of unity. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for your body, Lord, that was broken, that was bruised, that was battered, Lord God, um, for us. We thank you, Lord, because of your body that was broken for us, Lord, we are able to be healed. We are able to be made well, Lord. Thank you so, so much for your body. We remember you, Lord God, and your sacrifice. In Jesus' name. And then verse 27 and 28, it reads, Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now let us take the cup. We 
thank you, Father, for sending your Son to die on the cross for us. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us, Lord. Because of your blood, we are washed clean from our sins, Lord. Because of your blood, Lord, we are healed. Because of your blood, we are made brand new. Because of your blood, we are able to come back to you. Those who are lost, broken. Lord God, your blood brings us back to you. So Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We remember you at this time, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord, that you would use us, Lord. Use us, Lord, to be a vessel for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's Alina here. Welcome to Gen 12 Church. I have a quick segment for you guys, and the segment is called Did You Know? So, did you know that in the Bible there was a man who transported, who miraculously transported, or in other words, teleported? Well, in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 38 to 40, we're going to read and find out who that was. And it says, So he command, uh, wait, wait, wait. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And when he went on his way, rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So there you have it. Philip was miraculously taken from one place to another. Um, also known as being transported miraculously or even teleporting to another place where the Lord took him away. Announcement time. All right. We have our Gen 12 Church Building Fund account. And if you would like to save the details of that account, it's on the screen right now. We also have kids ministry every second Sunday at 10 a.m. on Zoom. So if you want your kids to be involved, please let us know so we can send you guys the Zoom link. But every Sunday at 11 a.m. we have our main church service on Facebook and on YouTube. Please share it with your friends. You can even watch it later if you want to. But yeah, we also have our weekday ministries. And this coming Wednesday we have our young women's ministry at 6 p.m. Uh, we also have on Thursday this week, we have our young men's ministry at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. So let us know if you guys want to be involved in that. And we also have our Gen 12 youth and young adults on Friday at 6.30 p.m. So get in contact with us. So we will get in contact with you. Praise the Lord. And coming up next, we have one of our elders, one of our youth leaders. She's also, you know, our keyboard, our main keyboard player for the worship team. She sings, you know, she writes songs. Her name is Crystal Maulno Puya. She has a fiery word for us today. So be inspired, be set on fire for the Lord. Be encouraged to live out what God has for you in your life and what God has called you to do. So God bless. Good morning everyone, my name is Crystal Maumapuya and today I'm going to be bringing you the main word. So if you all just bow your heads and pray with me and let's get started. So. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to have your way in our lives and that as I speak this word, that you um, will speak through me, Lord, that every single word that comes out of my mouth will be from you, Father, and that you will um, speak to your people tonight, speak to your children tonight and fill our hearts with the word this morning. So I just pray that as... Um, they listen and hear that they will soften their hearts to your word and receive it and be able to apply it to their lives. We thank you, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, good morning again to those who just joined in. Um, 
I'm going to be bringing you the main word and the message, well, the title for my message today is, Where is your yes? Subtitle, Have Courage. Amen? Um, And so, there's a lot of things going on at the moment, and when I think about the goodness of God and the amazing things He's done, not only my life, but the people around me, those around me, you know, I, I can see God's goodness and His faithfulness in everything that we do. Amen? And as we go into such trying times in the the state that our state is in at the moment, um, a lot of people are struggling and, you know, it's hard out there, but especially when you don't have God. And when we, the people of God, have God, we can properly go through life's ups and downs and still be stable, yeah? So, where is your yes? I was explaining to somebody this week and, um, you know, sometimes we can get so comfortable in saying no because we're, we're comfortable with where we're at and we don't want anything to change because where we're at right now is good for us. Everything's good, everything's comfortable, you know, and it might be like this. And when we get to that stage, we have to push ourselves into a, like out of our comfort zone, yeah? Into a place where we're not really sure what's going on, but we trust in God and we're gonna jump out and do it. And if God is asking you today to do something, I want you to get up and do it. Don't hesitate, don't be fearful, don't be afraid, but have courage and get outside that comfort zone. And you know, I was asking this person, where is your yes, where is your yes? And they're like, oh, but I said yes to this, or I said yes to that, and I was like, no, where is your yes? I'm hearing a lot of no's, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, um, maybes, but where is your yes? Okay, where is your yes to God? And so, um, in saying that, it takes a lot of courage to say yes to what God wants you to do, amen? And um, I looked up the definition of courage, and it, it says, this is in the English dictionary, the ability to do something that frightens one, bravery. Um, and another definition, um, strength in the face of pain or grief. Crazy, right? The, this thing called courage that is like the opposite of fear, right? But it says here, strength in the face of pain or grief. And another um, a Hebrew definition of it is chazak. Um, don't bash me if I said that wrong. But um, it means strength. And see, very similar to the, um, the other definition. <laughs> and so, you know, I think that's so powerful. Just these statements alone. The ability to do something that frightens one. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have spoken about this before where I'm afraid of heights or I'm afraid of um, spiders. But let's talk about being afraid of heights. Why am I afraid of heights? Um, I have a fear of falling. I feel like if I'm so high up and I fall, I might die. You know, and so that restricts me from doing certain things. I went rock climbing and I only got up, up like a meter and a half above the ground. And I was so crippled with fear. I don't know about you guys, but when you're so afraid, you feel like your heart is just like being squeezed and you can't rationally think. And so courage is being able to do something that might cause you grief or pain or even frighten you. And I didn't have the courage to continue climbing any higher. And I don't want that same thing to happen to you when it comes to things in your life, because sometimes that's what we can do, is that we will put fear in front of us. So imagine you're sitting in a car in the back seat or in the passenger seat and you, the person that's driving you is fear. How scary would that be? Because then every single time something scary comes along or something you're afraid of comes along, your fear is going to drive you. It's going to drive you into making 
irrational bad decisions or even you know there is good fear and we're gonna you know like there are good good fears like you know don't touch fire or you're gonna get burnt but I'm talking about the type of fear that stops you the type of fear that stops you from being courageous and doing the things that God wants you to do amen that's what we're talking about today so um, in Matthew 10 verse 28 it says and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy the soul and body in hell. You know, when you put things into perspective, let me say that again. When you put things into perspective, you can see it for what it truly is. Yeah, and Lena taught us the other, um, the other week about truth and what it means in Hebrew and and its um, reality. So what is the reality? What is the truth? Because the truth shall set you free, right? So like my irrational fear of spiders. When I am so huge compared to that small spider, even if it's this big, my whole everything is bigger than my hand, yeah? And why should I be afraid of something so small? And that those are irrational fears, like, you know, um, when God tells us to step out and speak to somebody or evangelize to somebody, He will give you the strength to do so. He will be with you when He, when, you know, when you do those things. But we fear people's opinions, what they think about us. You know, what's going to happen if I do that and God doesn't come through? Like these are all fears that hold us back from doing the miraculous. Yeah. From just simply stepping out and being obedient no matter how many people are there even if it's just you by yourself have the maximum impact amen um also there's another scripture i want to share with you guys is deuteronomy 31 verse 6 be strong and of good courage do not fear nor be afraid of them for the lord your god he is the one who goes with you he will not leave you nor forsake you amen so if god is telling you to do something he is what with you amen he's not away from you he's not just to call away he is with you so if you take that step he is taking that step with you amen have the confidence in god because we fail We might, you know, um, make mistakes and all these things, but our God is perfect. And if he is with us, what can we, you know, what can we not do? Like, we can do anything. Amen? And so another scripture I wanted to share with you is, is Psalm 27, verse 14. And it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So before you go out and you do anything for God, wait on Him. Spend time with Him. Seek Him earnestly. And then be of good courage because He is with you, yes? So you spent that time with God. Build that. Have courage in Him. And He will strengthen your heart. Yeah, where does strength come from? We think physically, if we go to the gym and we work out, we're going to build that strength. We're going to build that muscle. But what does it say here? He will strengthen your heart. Amen. He's going to strengthen your heart, your will, your soul. Like as you go out, God is going to strengthen you. So wait on him. Spend that time with him. Amen. Now, when have I needed courage in my life? Many times. Um, one, one in particular, my brother, Nano, as you all know, he has seizures. And it was one of the most challenging things that my family has had to face in our entire life. Um, I'd say that, you know, um, seeing him go into a full body seizure, if you don't know what that is, it's when you're, all the muscles in your body cramp up and you cannot control what's happening. I think most of the time he doesn't even remember what's going on, but he has that fear, 
yeah? He has that fear that another siege is going to come. And we have that fear that it's something out of our hands, out of our control. But we trust God, amen? If we were so crippled by that fear, we would be living in that and, and worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. But God gives us that strength to go on and to be able to run church and do all these things because we have trust in Him. We have faith in Him. God blessed us with Nanu and He will surely take care of Him, amen? Um, and then also another place, you know, that I've had to have courage is also um, at The Voice. Um, if you know that story, if you don't, you know. <laughs> um, but we had to stand up for what we believed in and not get pressured by money, power, fame, all these things that could have so easily come to us because it was like it was just presented like gifted to us okay you can do this you go through here it was like a miracle and then all of a sudden something happens and it goes against the standards that God had placed in us we had to have that stubbornness to stand for what we believe in amen and so you know we needed to have courage there was no one else around there was no other church members our parents weren't there it was just the three of us by ourselves you know confronted by um standing up for what we believe in and uh, also contracts and things that we'd never had to deal with before, but God gave us strength, God gave us courage. We had a stubbornness that could not be taken away because we knew who we served, amen? And it didn't matter what celebrity or who was in front of us, but whatever God told us to do over you know, overrode everything that anybody else was trying to say. You just have to block out the other voices and listen for that still small voice. And so um, another place that I had to have courage in is the protest. Um, if you guys haven't seen, we'd gone to the protest last week and it was um, a great experience to um, be among the people and see their heart and what they're crying out for and, and the injustice that's happening. And we had to have courage to go out there and be able to reach out to people there and, and um, really be a voice, you know, for the poor, for the widow, for the needy, amen? Which the, the scriptures in the Bible tells us to do so. And, you know, we felt that placed on our hearts that God was telling us to go, and so we've gone, yeah? Courage, courage, courage. We have to find that courage, amen? Find that courage within ourselves that's, well, not in ourselves, but in God, yeah? Because when you're in God, He gives us everything. He gives us that courage, that strength to go on. And what I really want to encourage you, church, today is don't let fear drive you, let courage drive you. Amen? So imagine you're sitting in the car and courage is driving you. Even just hearing that, for me, I feel like a stirring, like a burning, like a courage rising up inside of me. That if my life was driven by courage, was driven by faith, was driven by Jesus, how amazing would that be? Amen? Imagine Jesus was driving your life. How amazing would that be? I've seen so many miracles. You know, I've seen people's legs grow out. I've seen demons get cast out of people. I've seen people healed and those, you know, um, who are in a coma come back to life. These are crazy miracles that you would never even imagine happening. You see it like, you know, I'm a big fan of superheroes and, and um, having superpowers and all those things. And I watch Marvel comics and DC comics, but nothing amazes me more than the miracles that God creates, that God makes, amen? That when I see God's miracles in my life, it's so overwhelming. You know, um, and I and I get emotional thinking about it because he's so good, and I, like I've seen the evidence of God in my life so strong, and when I see these people crying out for justice, for peace, for all of these things, and I know that it's found in Christ, I just want to reach out to them and tell them like Jesus loves you. You know, he he died for you, he came for you, and the struggles that you're going through, he knows them. He feels them and, and he wants to take that from you so that you can live free. But we have to decide that for ourselves because, you know, God, he, 
He's a gentleman. He's not going to just barge his way through your life. He waits for you. And he knocks. But he earnestly comes and comes. And he he's evident in our life and everything around us. He's always constantly speaking to us. We just have to turn up the volume. Yeah. Turn up the volume to what the Lord is trying to say. Don't turn it down. Don't turn it down. Every time you dismiss what God is trying to say or you try and just oh yeah I'll we'll talk about it later Lord like you know you miss out and you start turning the volume down to his voice so you need to the more you're obedient the more you step out God is going to speak to you more and more clearly and you just have to seek him amen and um that's like the the biggest part of what I really wanted to share is just to have courage I was such a fearful young person, but as I got older and I knew God's faithfulness, my faith in Him just grew and grew and grew. And now when I see people, I can have compassion for them instead of anger and all these things. Yeah, our flesh comes up every now and again, but we just gotta shut it down, yeah? Shut it down and just let God shine. Let Him shine through you. Don't put a lampshade over, let it shine for everyone to see. It's a dark, dark world out there, but God, he is bright and we must be also. And, you know, just like it says, Jesus, um, you know, he is the life, the truth, the way, well, the way, truth and life, you want to put it in the right order. And he is. You know, if you really want that peace, if you really want that love, that courage, that yes, saying yes to God's work, saying yes to his ways and his will and every single step that we take, then I encourage you to give your life to him. Give your life to Jesus. He gave his whole life. He died for us. And if we can only grasp that, that somebody died for you, somebody died for me, and he took every single sin on that cross. There is nothing too hard. There is nothing too hard for God. And I just encourage you, church, or anybody who's watching, if you've never joined our services before, if you've never even been to our church services in person, I just encourage you today to seek the Lord, to pray, and to Give your life to Christ, for he loves you so much, more than the government, more than your brother, more than your mother, more than your dad. Jesus loves you more. So thank you so much for listening to this word today. I hope that you find your yes to God and give it to him and just simply move. Amen. Simply do. Don't hold back, just do it. So if you wanna give your life to Christ and you haven't done so, I'm gonna pray with you right now and repeat after me. So if you think this message was for you, then pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me and my sin. I acknowledge that you are my saviour and the only way to heaven. You are the Son of God. I repent from my sinful ways and turn to you. I am a new creation in Christ. I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you made that declaration today, we celebrate with you and all of heaven celebrates. So thank you so much, church, for joining in. I love you, and Jesus loves you more. Bye. Thank you so much to Crystal Moonga Puya for that amazing word. Thank you for encouraging us. I hope that today you were inspired to say yes to the Lord, to say yes to what God has called you to, to press in to the the purpose and the plan that God has specifically for you.
And if you gave your heart to Jesus today and you want to learn more about the Lord, you want to get closer to the Lord, you want to learn about this new life that God has given you, please get in contact with us because we would love to help you. We would love to connect with you. We would love to pray with you and see your relationship with the Lord grow and increase. Amen and amen. But thank you all for joining us today at Gen 12 Church. We love you. Remember that we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. And we love you, but Jesus loves you more. We'll see you all next week.